Hello everyone, what we're going to be talking about today are capacitors. Now capacitors are these devices that we can see over here in this picture on the right that store electrical energy. So it's really really crucial. The uh, s electrical symbol for capacitor for capacitor is illustrated here on this diagram over here on the left. In fact, we have a pretty simple circuit in which we have a capacitor which is connected to a cell and a resistor across there. And in, in this circuit, the capacitor will start charging. Now, a capacitor, as you can see over here on the left, will have two plates. The one which is connected to the positive terminal will acquire positive charge and the one which is connected to the negative terminal will acquire negative charge. Now every capacitor has a positive and negative terminal when we are dealing with those capacitors in the lab. Uh, normally the positive will be labeled, for example this one here could be the positive terminal like so and the one on the other side could be the negative terminal. A lot of the early capacitors were parallel plate capacitors. You can see that this has changed in, um, in recent years and uh, a lot of the modern in-use capacitors are cylindrical and a lot of the ones that we're going to be dealing with in the lab are actually of cylindrical shape. The way to get charged is actually very interesting. We're going to be looking at that in quite a bit of detail later on. But if we connect a capacitor to a cell or to any other power supply, the, um, the electrons from the negative plate are going to flow, well in this case like so, which will be counterclockwise, then they will be deposited on the negative plate. Now those electrons that are being deposited, they're actually going to repel some of the negative charges on the opposite plate which are going to be moving in, the, in this direction, which uh, contributes to the charging of the capacitor. Once the capacitor has reached the voltage of the charging supply, so let's say that our cell is 5 volts, once the capacitor has reached 5 volts, the charging is complete. Every capacitor has a limit to how much charge they can store per unit voltage. This is known as the capacitance. In order to describe what capacitance is, let's think of the amount of charge that we can store on this capacitor. Let's call that Q. Now, the amount of charge that we can store is going to be proportional to the voltage. In other words, if we have more energy into the circuit, we'll be able to squeeze more charge onto the plates of those capacitors. There's a constant of proportionality between the amount of charge and the potential difference and this is known as the capacitance. We're arranging for C, our capacitance, we're going to get that C is equal to Q divided by V. In other words, our capacitance is equal to the amount of charge stored per unit potential difference. The unit for capacitance is known as the farad. Fundamentally, this is a coulomb per volt. Let's have a look at this question over here, which is to express the farad in terms of its base units. So we know that capacitance is given in the unit farad, which, is, which has the same units as coulombs divided by volts. Now the first thing to do when we're dealing with any question on base units would be just to simplify that equation for it as much as possible. So I'm just going to start off with just writing C is equal to Q divided by V. And if you look into your formula sheet or if you remember this formula, you're going to remember that voltage is electrical work done per unit charge. So this will be Q divided by W over Q. Because I'm dividing by Q in my uh, denominator, then what I can do is uh, just multiply by the inverse. So this is going to equal Q multiplied by Q 
divided by w which is equal to q squared divided by work done now this is where we can start introducing some units in fact i'll probably even take it a step further and say that q is equal to i times t squared and work done has the same units as force times distance okay now let's start inputting some units so the units for the current are amps squared multiplied by seconds squared these are the units on the top of the fraction and we're going to divide that by the units of force now remember force is just mass times acceleration for the purposes of these these units we can just say that um, work done will be kilograms uh, multiplied by acceleration which is measured in meters squared s to the power of minus two multiplied oops little mistake here it's just meters isn't it so meters per second squared i'm a little bit ahead of myself as we're about to see multiplied by meters again for the distance so all we need to do is uh, essentially tidy this fraction up a little bit so this is going to equal um, amps squared s to the power of 2 I'm going to put everything on one line so rather than divided by kilograms I'm going to write kg raised to the power of minus 1 so meters times meters that's going to give me meters squared so that's going to give me m to the power of minus 2 and s to the power of minus 2 I need to bring that up there so that's going to flip its sign so that's going to turn into seconds squared I'm almost done just notice that I have s squared here and s squared squared there which means that I can combine those two and the base units of um, of the farad are actually going to be amp squared s to the power of 4 kg to the power of minus 1 meters to the power of minus 2 now just to summarize what we looked today are these new electrical components that store electrical energy that are known as capacitors they have a positive plate and a negative plate the symbol for a capacitor is uh, essentially two parallel lines which are of equal size connected to a circuit. The main equation that we looked at today is that the charge stored of them, the excess charge stored of them, it will be proportional to its voltage. That constant of proportionality is known as capacitance and the unit of that is the farad. So uh, C is equal to Q over V, then we've used our knowledge of base units to express the farad in terms of its base units. So we can even add that farad over there. Okay folks, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If there are any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.